Hi, people. So, um, before we get into the main subject of this, uh, just a quick word on the Birmingham Commonwealth Games. Um, probably there's more I could have said in that uh, video, as always. Um, I still think the event was very good. Um, came across a video on GB News, and they were slamming it, what they perceived as its walkery. I sort of know where they're coming from. There was definitely references to that. For example, the poem was all about bashing the empire. And um, there was quite a lot of references to diversity and things like that. So there was definitely woke overtones. Definitely there was some of that going on. And the first half hour, the commentary was very BBC and very much about the need for diversity and, and all of that. But... At the same time, I think GB News is being a little bit overly negative. I, I, I still think the event was very good. I still think that there was a lot of creativity involved. Although I don't know why they had Samuel Johnson looking like Jabba the Hutt. That's a bit of a strange decision. But I thought the Jaguar sequence was excellent. I thought the giant bull was amazing. Apparently that's going to stay in Birmingham City Centre. Um, I'm not sure where. But that, that's a great work of art. It's a great work of uh, mechanics. Um, incredible. So um, if you happen to come across that GB News um, take on the Commonwealth Games, um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. I, I personally think they're, they're exaggerating a bit. I don't think it was all woke. I think they're being a bit too negative. Anyway, um, I want to talk about two things uh, here. One is online dating. One is mental health. Um, I had a number of things going around my head today about what my next video would be. Um, but I guess there is some overlap with these. Now, I was going to make a video on online dating, like a uh, sort of summary video, or rather a conclusion video. But the last one I made was just ridiculously long. It was like 40 minutes, which I know no one is going to listen to me for that long. Um, I always do say, though, with my longer videos, you know, feel free to multitask because you know some youtubers they have this thing where they make these short snappy videos at five minutes i find that my subject matter i can't do that because um the things that i want to talk about and the details of those issues can't really be summarized in five minutes usually there's more facets to them so i'm not going to do that i'm not going to condense videos into like these little slots like I don't know, it just, I don't think it will work out with the sort of content that I cover. Um, but at the same time, I know 40 minutes is definitely quite on the long side. Um, my purpose of this is to try and give people some awareness if they're thinking about getting into the world of online dating. I've made a few other videos, so I'm going to try not to repeat too much of what I've said before, but this is... This is a good time to make it because my membership of eHarmony has just expired like a couple of days ago. Um, I basically signed up for a year, so I'll try to get to the basics here and get to the point and the issue about mental health comes into this. Um, I thought, well, I have some money. I have nothing to lose. I may as well just try this. I'd always been cynical about online dating. Um, I'd always thought, well, the businesses, they just want your money. Um, it's shallow. It's full of shallow people. You can't trust anyone. In retrospect, it was a little bit, perhaps, unduly cynical, perhaps. Um, now, I've come out of this. I'm still single. So in that sense, it's something of a disappointment. In that sense, yes, it's not quite the outcome I would have liked. Um, after a year... You know, I would have liked to have been dating now and with the lady that I would have found. Um, and that obviously hasn't happened. There's a range of reasons why not. I'm going to cover some of them here. Now, some of this is personal. But honestly, um, I, I don't see the point of being all cagey and like, oh, I'm not going to talk about that. Um, some of the finer things I won't go into details on, but I'm going to cover the main things because... I don't think it's a state secret. I don't think, you know, these are things that a lot of people experience. So I don't see anything wrong with talking about it. Um, I went to eHarmony because it's one of the bigger sites. It's well known. 
I, I just thought, well, if I'm going to do this, I want to go to the, like, you know, if you're choosing a bank, you want to go to a name that's kind of recognised rather than one that's not. So it's the same principle. Um, eHarmony, what you do, if you pay for the premium service, and most dating sites, you know, they'll offer this, a premium service. Um, and to be honest, really, it's the only thing you can choose because if you opt not to have a paid membership, you can't do anything. You know, if someone messages you, you can't reply. Uh, photos are blurred, so you can't really see who you're looking at, the profiles that you're looking at. You can't message people. Um, you can't even receive messages. So it'll be like, this person's messaged you. Pay for the premium to see what she says. So it's a little bit, it's not deceptive because they're upfront about it, but um, they're a business. So just be aware of that. If you're on the dating site and you're not paying for anything, you're going to get very little out of it is not worth it it's really not worth it and if anything it could mess with your um mental health a bit because you might find someone that you like and you can't reply to her or him so yeah i would say it's in that sense it's worth paying for um and i paid up front for the whole thing i didn't want to do like a monthly payment i just thought okay i'll pay for the whole year it, it wasn't cheap it was 108 pounds but was the whole year and I utilized that I looked at lots of profiles I sent lots of messages I received messages I utilized what you could do with that so um the first sort of serious person I met on the site uh I I spoke specifically about her in another video so I'm not going to talk too much about that but suffice to say this was a person I got very close to we um at first uh, the messages were a bit mundane like oh uh, What's your name, your hobbies, the usual sort of questions. But then it got a little bit more serious in the sense that we were both taking it a little bit more seriously. And my thing was, well, if I find someone on this site that seems right, I want to elevate it a bit. I want to increase the communication by video, by having some sort of video chat. Because my cynicism with online dating was always that people could say anything in writing. So you need to see the person to really know, um, to really know. And um, yeah, so eventually she was a bit wary at first, but she agreed. And we had uh, the first chat was great. And it's one of those things, you know, if you do this, if you go to online dating, you start to learn things about yourself and you start to learn, well, this is a natural connection with someone. Then other times it will be awkward and it won't feel natural at all. So. I found it beneficial to speak to a lot of different people, which I did. Some of them, I'd say most of them, it was quite comfortable. I don't think the communication was awkward. That was minimal, I have to say. So that's a more positive thing. I didn't really have, there was no arguments. There was no awkwardness, really. Um, so what I'm saying is those I did communicate with, mostly it was positive. Anyway, I got close to this lady. Um, she was from the Philippines. Real high flyer. I mean, she'd done all sorts of things in her life. She'd been a model. She'd been um, a flight attendant, a teacher. Um, she'd been in advertising. She'd been an actress. Um, not on a big scale, but she had done some television work in the Philippines. Um, and yeah, she just seemed like a real catch. Very beautiful woman. Um, she came across as a great personality, warm, friendly. It was wonderful. And I thought, whoa. I'm a lucky guy to have met her. But basically, um, yeah, we got into these very extensive conversations. We exchanged emails. It got, it got pretty serious. And we were making serious plans. Then it all fell flat. She suddenly changed her direction. Um, she gave me the reasons, but the reasons really didn't add up. She said that she felt we were working at a different pace. Um, and her reasoning just didn't make sense. She she complimented me and she said, I'm a great guy, blah, blah, blah. But this sudden U-turn that she done had a pretty bad effect on me because it was so sudden. There was no warning sign. There was no change in tone. It just came like that. And we were seriously planning a trip to New York City. I was saving money for it. I mean, it was because I thought, well, I'm not naive. If, if this is going to go further, I want to meet this woman. I want to know, you know. Um, but 
you know, her profiles on the site corroborated with her profiles on social media. That's a good way to sort of tell if someone's sincere. The things they say, for example, on a dating site, there's no harm in corroborating it a bit, seeing, for example, if it's the same profile they have on social media, same name, that sort of thing. Uh, um, I check all of that, and she was who she said she was. So that wasn't the issue. The issue was rather that... Um, yeah, uh, she had some personal issues. Uh, I'm not going to betray her privacy here. I'm not going to name her or anything like that. But looking back now, I think she had some mental health problems that I'd underestimate. But it had an effect on me because it really, it was like shattered hope. I felt great about this. I felt the best I'd felt for a very long time. And it all came tumbling down. Okay, so sh she's gone from my life. Um... And I figure, well, I'm still on this. This has been really hurtful. It's been a difficult thing. But I'm still on the site, so I'm not going to just leave. I've paid for it. So I was talking to other women. Um, my thing was always about being proactive. And the truth is, most dating sites, men are still expected to make the first move. Rightly or wrongly, I think that's the way it goes. But I was proactive, you know. I I would message women who I, I liked. I liked their profile. I felt attracted to them. I liked the way they expressed themselves. Whatever it was, something about the profile got my attention. So I would be proactive and message them. Now, I mean, I spoke to quite a few people through that method. I didn't mislead anyone. I, I was always up front with them. Look, I believe in getting to talk to you. Let's see if we have common ground. You know, that would be the approach that I took. And I did take. Um, on the positive side, I made some friends from it. You know, there's some women I spoke to on that site I'm still friends with, and in some cases, quite good friends. Now, it didn't quite work out that we would be together because they had the reasons. Um, in one case, for example, one lady, she was just, she still had feelings for her ex, and she was honest about this. Um, but we, we agreed we'd stay friends because we respected each other, we liked each other. And yeah, she's still in my life. I, I respect her decision. She's trying to make a work out with her ex and that's that. Um, so I, I don't think there's anything wrong with making friends through these sites, as long as you know yourself that you're okay with that. Um, but of course, my primary focus wasn't getting a girlfriend. Just a few things about eHarmony if you're not used to it. Um, they have some strange ways of doing things. They have this little number scheme so they will, uh, if you're on the premium service, they match you up with people. And you can choose certain criteria. You could choose the age group. You can choose uh, education background, employment. There's a whole lot of things. One thing eHarmony doesn't focus on at all is um, aesthetics. They don't ask, for example, do you like a um, tall person? Do you like... Um, you know, this colour of hair, do you like... They do ask it, if not, yeah, actually, they do. That is one of the options. Um, I happen to like East Asian women, but I'm open-minded, you know. I would look at white, Hispanic, black women as well. Um, but honestly, I do like East Asian women. Anyway, um, they, they let you look at all this criteria and sort of select that. And that's all fine, but there's... The number criteria I still don't quite understand because sometimes the eHarmony will match you very highly. So it'll be a high number, for example, 120. Okay, okay well, eHarmony thinks we have a lot in common. So you look and you sometimes struggle to see what there is. Sort of profiles that would attract me is women who came across as sincere and had some detail. I wouldn't spend any time on a profile that had no detail, even if there was a photograph. Um, even if she was very attractive, if if there's no details there, like nothing, her hobby, uh, any way she describes herself, if nothing's there, it's just going to be a waste of time. It makes me think that person isn't making an effort. Because this is the thing about online dating, um, and it's something I was always aware of. You can't expect other people to reach out to you if you're not making an effort. Anyway, um, there are things to be aware of. And this is where online dating can be very trying. I had a, a gay friend, though, he tried out some sites. Maybe they were gay sites, but I think the general premise isn't that different, really, other than the market. But the premise really isn't that different. And he said you do get a lot of dead ends. 
And he's right about that. What you find with online dating, if you have an experience like me, and I'm not saying I'm, a, I'm an expert, but I was on this for a year. On eHarmony, you have this little tool that says people who have looked at your profile. So you can see members who've looked at your profile. And that, that's kind of interesting because it shows who's interested in you. And I tried to sell myself. I tried to get decent photos. I know I I don't look like Brad Pitt, but, you know, I tried to get better photos. I tried to sell myself. I tried to be optimistic and, you know, I just tried to sell myself. And I think I did. Anyway, um, so you can see this little button, people who've shooed your, your profile. But one thing that sometimes happens is, you know, you'll message someone. And one of several things will happen. Either she will totally ignore it. And you know that because if someone's read your message, there'll be two ticks. And if they haven't, it's one tick. There's a little, there's a way of seeing if they've even looked at your message. Um, sometimes I had fleeting responses like, oh, hello, how are you? But there'd be no follow-up, no sort of enthusiasm there. Like, well, do you want to talk? And it would just be the trail off. Um, so that would kind of be, I, I don't think that's necessarily a dead end. What I did experience a couple of times was time wasters. That is people who will give the impression they're interested. So they will respond and they don't respond saying, oh, I'm sorry. And uh, I don't think we're compatible. They'll respond and show interest. And then they'll send a message and maybe another message. But then they just don't bother. And that is what I consider to be a dead end. And that's not cool. I don't consider a dead end when you talk to someone and you realize, well, we don't really have this in common. I don't really think that's a dead end because it's it's disappointing. But if the person's being honest, you can't blame them for being honest about what they're looking for, what you're looking for. So I, I never saw those conversations as a waste of time. And I had a lot of them, probably 15 altogether. In fact, it's quite useful you learn things about yourself you know you get to know more about what exactly you're looking for i i didn't think they were a waste of time um i rejected people a couple of times because um i would chat to them a little bit and i i would also look at the profile and i would think well I, i'm struggling to see what we have in common here and yes the aesthetic appeal was part of it um if i'm not attracted to someone it doesn't matter how sincere a person they are, if they're a nice person, generous. If I'm not attracted to them, I'm not attracted to them. And this is something, you know, a lot of people get a bit self-righteous about this. Oh, it's only what's inside that counts. No, I'm sorry, but if most people are being true, true about this, if they're being sincere, most people, I reckon, do care at least somewhat about physical appearance. Call it what you want, call it shallow, call it whatever. But I, I I, think people who say that they don't think at all about that, they're either unusual or they're not being honest. I think it's virtue signaling to say, oh, it's what's inside that counts. Um, so honestly, I think physical attraction is part of it. Um, so... I've rejected and I've been rejected and there, I just think there's a way to do it which is on the rare occasion I did reject someone it, I always was very careful to be sensitive not to hurt her feelings um, you know what I would usually do my pitch would be thank you for messaging me and like I said it's mostly men message women but I got one or two messages particularly early on and I said uh, look I really appreciate you messaging me I appreciate your time and your kind words. And I meant that because they were nice messages. Uh, but I said, um, and I, I'm not sure if we're compatible, but I wish you all the best. That's how I'd approach it. Um, or in one case, I said, I'm getting closer to another member, which at that time was true, absolutely true. So I have a clean conscience knowing that I, I always treated other members with respect there, always. Because it's, you know, it's how you want to be treated yourself. But the thing is, and this is the big caveat you need to know with online dating, whatever your values are, and if they're like mine, you value good communication, you value honesty. Unfortunately, not everyone values those things. 
some people don't think twice about wasting other other people's time. Uh, you also have to consider, here's another thing about online dating. Sometimes, sometimes it's not that they're being malicious and they're being dishonest or they want to waste your time or play emotional games. Sometimes you'll get people who will maybe sign on out of curiosity, but then they realize they have to pay the premium and they can't. So maybe, maybe I messaged some women and they just didn't have the premium service. So more recently, I've taken to sort of saying, if I messaged someone, I would say, if you don't have the premium service, you can reach me on, then I would give another social media contact. Um, so you need to consider all of these things. If someone's ignoring you, it may not be that they're being rude or they're not interested. It may genuinely be that they, they literally can't return the message because eHarmony won't let them. Um, that's something to consider. One thing I didn't like, and if I were to give feedback to eHarmony, I think they should change this. Sometimes, you know, if someone rejects you and they don't want to say it, which I think personally I would, I would be upfront with the person. I wouldn't just say nothing if someone spent the time to message me. But you get this thing saying, you know, I'll have sent a message to a member. Then the next day is like, she says goodbye. Not like, oh, sorry, we're not compatible or something like that. Just says goodbye and I think, what, what was it something I said? That I don't like that. I think it would be better if eHarmony just done it anonymously rather than this automated she says goodbye knowing full well she hasn't said goodbye. It's just their automated service. I don't like that. And that's one thing I would suggest that they change. Um, I also think the compatibility thing, I don't understand how they, they reach their conclusions on that. Because I find women that I really... Um, on quite well with um we had things in common and the compatibility score was quite low and other people they matched us very highly and i'm thinking what i mean there was one girl just as an example and she put tv shows and i'm sure she put like britain's got talent or jeremy kyle or something like that which i've no time for i don't like and the harmony is ranking us very highly and i'm thinking why are you doing that you know i mean what is your what makes you think I'm going to connect with that? So sometimes I question how they reach these conclusions that two members are compatible. They also say every 14 minutes someone finds true love on eHarmony. Well, how exactly do they work that out? I mean, is it member to report back, I found a girlfriend or a boyfriend? I don't know the science of that. I don't know how they work that out. Strange. Um... So I'm going to conclude with uh, a recent experience I've had. Um, I mentioned that I started off this woman, um, we got very close and it all fell flat. But more recently, something similar happened. And, you know, it's not a case that I didn't learn my lesson because the circumstances were a little bit different this time around. So this person, firstly, she's in the UK, so it's practically a lot better. She's in Edinburgh which is about two hours from me by train. Um, and she was someone I'd messaged early on, but she never replied, so I didn't really think anything of it. But she did reply in late June and basically said, sorry for my late message. Um, I've been busy. And she explained that, which was a little bit strange. But anyway, we started talking and I explained to her, look, I like you, but I take this seriously. So please, if you're interested, please, you know, communication matters. Don't, basically, don't waste my time. Um, anyway, we started talking. We were getting close. Um, we, that thing I mentioned earlier about chemistry and hitting it off, you know, what you'll find is some people you'll talk to, and it'll be very run-of-the-mill, like, well, this is my family, this is my hobbies, and it's sort of like reading a script, and you don't really feel anything. It's just being polite. Um, but with this girl, a uh, young woman, um, you know, we, we really hit it off. And it wasn't one-sided because the things that she was saying to me, she was being really complimentary. The sort of things were, oh, I can't wait to speak to you again. I'm, I'm really excited about this and it's great. You know, so there was a real chemistry there. We were communicating by email as well. I didn't actually get to the point of a video chat, which I do regret. Um, the reason is she said that her mother wanted her to focus on studies um she's a student nurse and not meeting guys online 
this is a young woman, you know, she's 27 years old. She's not, she's not a child. And um, she's from Malaysia. So there may be cultural issues going on there. But I suspect it's more her family situation because she's an only child. Her father passed away. And again, I'm not naming her here, so I'm not going to betray her privacy. But we were um, we were really flirting and it was just a really good feeling. We were even planning to meet up. But after this, uh, she basically messaged to explain this and said we couldn't go ahead with the talk because she'd had this argument with her mom and it went really badly. And she explained that, excuse me, if some, I don't have hay fever, I don't know what that is. Um, she explained that uh, she, she told her mum, I'm a gentleman, it was all good. But basically, to cut a long story short, um, despite her saying she would get back to me, despite her saying I, I don't deserve this and she would make it up, and I told her what I went through before, it's been a month now and nothing, nothing. Then I noticed her profile just disappeared. So the only form of contact we had was the emails. Of course, I sent her a few emails trying to work out what's going on. But now I realise that it's highly unlikely she'll get back in touch. And yeah, I've been ghosted, basically. Um, this is where the mental health thing comes in. When people are behind the screen, the truth is some people are cards. They won't take responsibility. You might think that's a harsh judgment, but you know, anyone who's been through this, anyone who's been ghosted or left in limbo for a long time, it's a shitty, shitty thing to do to someone. It really is. Now, in the unlikely event that she got, she gets back in touch. I'll, I'll hear her out. I'll hear her reasoning why it's been so long, especially since she said that she would. Now, bear in mind, this woman did not reject me. She didn't say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't think things are working out. She said, I want to try for this. I want to see if things can work out. Nothing. So I, I do feel betrayed. I do feel that she's put me in this limbo. The last month has been very difficult for me. I could have done without it. So here I am. My membership's expired. I'm still single. I've made some friends through the site. Um, one of them very kindly spoke to me about this uh, from a woman's perspective, and she gave some very useful feedback. And what she said, in her opinion, this woman was emotionally immature. And the more I think about it, the more I think that must have been the issue. Not necessarily malicious, not necessarily dishonest. She just didn't know how to handle it. And that's really a pity. Because common sense should dictate that if you leave someone else in the dark, it's going to hurt them. Um, but what my friend said was that, you know... <laughs> that um lost my trail of thought there that if someone was really emotionally invested they would have followed up by now so she doesn't want to feel like the bad guy so she thought it's easier to just get the whole thing and just not reply to me and that way she can focus on her studies and she could be busy and she can move on and she doesn't have to feel guilty it's a pretty shitty thing to do to be honest because the last month i've been thinking about her no no more it's the end of July, August, I have to find a way to just move on. So I've been busy. I've been thinking about the the leadership election of the Tories. You know, there's things that have distracted me. My parents came up recently, but the conclusion here and what I really want to lay out, I've got under 40 minutes, less than 30, so I guess not too bad, is if you're going to online dating, a few things. And this isn't advice. I'm not telling anyone what to do. I'm just saying this is my experience. Be absolutely sure of what you want, what you're looking for. Have that in your mind to begin with. Be aware that not everyone will have your values. So if, like me, you value communication and you believe that is good manners, unfortunately, not everyone does. So be aware of that. Be aware that not everyone will have the same uh, membership. So some people might not be replying, not because they're being rude or they don't, they're not interested in you, but because they really, really can't. What else can I say? Um, just be aware that 
anything behind the screen cannot be certain until you meet that person. I never got to that point. I came close on two occasions, the beginning and the end, and it didn't happen. And it was hurtful. But I think unless you get into a situation where you can meet that person, where you have enough confidence with them, they have enough confidence with you, in a public place, of course, then you can't be certain of anything. So the trap of something like eHarmony is you might meet someone like the two ladies I described at the start and the end who make you feel great, who make you feel, oh, we're really on something here. Be be wary of feeling that good because it can blind you to the reality that it, it's still it's still not a certain thing. So I'm not saying go in and be very negative and cynical. That's not good either. But just be aware, be aware that until you meet the person directly, nothing is certain. You know that first lady I spoke to. We were we shared our lives basically. We were. Speaking extensively, yet it still didn't work out. She still done a U turn and changed her mind. So, just be aware that that can happen. And so, I guess look at it as kind of a guideline or a, a certain direction. But nothing, nothing about online dating can be certain unless you've got to the level of actually meeting the person. And if you are going to meet them. Uh, certainly if it's international that's a huge thing uh, sometimes it is successful there are success stories but just be very wary again if you're meeting them I would suggest suggest a neutral location if she or he is in another country suggest a halfway point of a neutral country that way you're both investing in it um, if you buy the plane tickets maybe see that she gets the hotel something like this so you're both investing in it if you're meeting her or him in, in your country, uh, i.e. here in the UK, uh, make it a public place, especially women for safety reasons. Um, check the details, you know, check that who they are saying they are on the site corroborates with social media. If they have absolutely no other source of contact, I would be a bit suspicious. Now in this case, a Malaysian uh, woman, she, she wasn't on social media, but she had an email. Some people don't do social media that much, and that's fine. But there are certain sort of ways to see if they are who they say they are. Um, if they are just flirting and nothing else, I would be wary of that. If they ask for money, certainly be aware of that. I never experienced that problem, thank goodness. But some people do. You know, you get lonely people uh, who are preyed on by some very um, basic criminals who will ask them for money, so be very wary of that. Ultimately, you have to use your head as much as your heart on these sites. You have to be very, very wary, because unfortunately, there are people out there who are prepared to not consider others' feelings, and they might justify it to themselves. But it's a shitty thing to do, and it will affect others. What I would do differently... I would perhaps be a little bit more wary. I don't think I was naive. I did corroborate. I did make sure they were who they said they were, things like that. So I, I, I don't believe I was very naive. But I got hurt. I got hurt quite badly. And that would be the way I would look at it differently. I wouldn't put absolute hope on anything. So, for example, if I got a situation like this again where I was feeling great, I would say to her, look, I cannot afford, I've been through this before, I'm feeling good about this, I like you, but if you feel things aren't going to work out, please just tell me, do not leave me in the dark, or I might put it like this, I might just ask her, what do you think of ghosting, what do you think of people who leave others in the dark, put her on the spot, you know, uh, you need to really ask some questions like this to get to know the person. Um, and if any of their answers leave you with uncertainty, I just say goodbye or follow up. Anyway, that would be my my take. Uh, I don't mean that as advice. It's just my perspective. Okay, I'm going to round this up, but just be wary. Um, 
online dating can be very, very trying. Having said that, I really don't think it's that much worse than real life dating. I mean, you could go up to a woman in a bar and she could reject you and it, it doesn't feel any better. So I don't necessarily think it's worse than real life dating. And actually with the pandemic and with a lot of other things, at least with online dating, you know that people are broadly looking for the same thing. Maybe some are more serious than others. But I'd say the vast majority of people on online dating sites are looking for a boyfriend or girlfriend. So at least you know if you approach someone, they're not going to say, oh, I'm with someone right now, I'm not interested in dating. They might reject you, at least that won't be the reason, or unlikely to be the reason. Whereas if you're interested in someone in the outside world, you have to work out, is she single? Will she be interested? Is she, is she looking for dating? So I still say that online dating isn't all bad. I've made some friends from this. I've learned things about myself. If I'm rating it out of 10, the whole experience, five, five. Definitely could have been better. But I wouldn't totally, totally diminish it and say it was all bad. And I'll almost certainly sign up again when I can afford to. Let me know your thoughts. And if you want to ask anything about eHarmony, please do. I'll try my best to answer.